Okay, welcome back to Bloodstock TV. I am absolutely over the moon to be joined by Derek from Sepultura. How are you, man? Fantastic, man. I'm here in lovely San Antonio, Texas. Of course, you're you're out with uh, the, I love the clash with a K of the Titans with the S, so it's the creator of Sepultura's Clash of the Titans tour. Currently rolling across uh, America at the moment with uh, the mighty Death Angel and Spirit World. Um, you're kind of quarter of the way through this tour. How's it all going at the minute? It must be great to finally be out there just ripping quadra in front of the American audiences after kind of being so tied down with the, the delay of the pandemic and everything. But is the tour, the tour is going great, is it? Yeah, the tour has been fantastic. It's great to be able to play with so many great friends and, and bands and just running into people I hadn't seen in a long time. And, um, I, I love playing the U.S., touring the U.S. and Canada, and for us, it's a great opportunity to sh play more Quadra songs with a mix of old Simple Tour songs, and it seems to be going really well. The reason we're having a chat today is you guys are coming back to Bloodstock. You're coming home to Bloodstock, let's put it that way. Um, Sunday on the Ronnie James Dio stage at Bloodstock. Uh, that's the Megadeth headline day, and it's just an absolutely killer lineup on that stage alone, never mind the other stages that are, are, are happening across the arena. Returning to a festival that you know sort of so well, and you like what memories do you have of Bloodstock uh, as, a, as a festival as a whole for you guys? I think for us, it, it went really fast, unfortunately. You know, we really wanted to. to to play, you know, even a better position, you know, um, I'm not gonna lie about that. Um, it was exciting because there was so much momentum and energy during our show that I felt that we should be in a better spot on the bill and that's what's happening um, this year. So it's really exciting to, to, to move up in the billing, um, to play in front of more people. It's the ultimate goal of any artist, you know, so um, I think also to have the energy of the crowd at certain times as an impact as well. Playing super, super late, it's not the greatest all the time, you know, being the headliner, but, um, you know, it, it's like finding that sweet spot. And I think we have like an incredible position, thanks to Vicky and Bloodstock, and I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, what I remember before, like I said, it just went by too fast and I, I really wanted more of it, you know, it's such a great vibe hanging out with so many great people, great artists, and uh, just be a part of something that's very historical. With this being, uh, I mean, this is your only UK festival, and the only UK show you're playing for the remainder of this year, um, from what I can see. Uh, yes. Bearing that in mind, uh, and I, I mean, I was talking to Andreas uh, at the start of the tour, uh, I think when you guys were out with Sacred Reich and Crowbar, um, we okay. kind of had a chat, <clears throat> and he was saying to me that the idea was to introduce more uh, songs from Quadra into the set. Um, so I'm assuming that's happened, and that is happening as you're on this uh, North American tour. But will we get anything kind of new uh, into the set, or some kind of old bangers that uh, uh, classic tracks that will be, you know, for the Bloodstock set because it's 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 quite a monumental uh, performance for you guys this year. I think. You know, the idea is definitely to, of course, play Quadra songs just because, you know, we really need to support that and that's the latest thing that we have out. Um, it goes very well with a lot of the older songs that we have. So we're going to have to really think through the set list that we'll do for Bloodstock and try to come up with something very special, something that we're not doing on this tour, um, you know, to give it, I don't know, just to really get us motivated to try something new, you know, to really not get so comfortable. But just talking about uh, Quadra, I couldn't believe uh, that, I mean, it turned three years old, February of this year. And I was like, oh my God, because the sort of the pandemic throws you when you're trying to look back on, you know, what was going on during that time. Um, so with the three years since the release of the album, and I know that you guys have been touring a lot lately, and. From what I can see with your <clears throat> with your dates, you are pretty busy right up until I think autumn, uh, going into the end of the year. So my question is, uh, are there you know ideas for new music kind of knocking around at the moment now? I mean, have you come up with lyrics? Are there riffs there? A couple of demo tracks? 
um, for a potentially follow-up to uh, Quadra? At the moment, no. I think we're really focused on um, sets that we have going on right now, these tours, you know, kind of being in the moment. You know, it, it's been so long since we have played, um, two years of not touring. So to get back into the swing of that is, is almost like a rebirth. Um, so it's really been important for us to develop our stage show and think about a lot of things also for next year as far as um, it will be like the 40th anniversary year of Sepultura um, and that should be very special. Um, so I think our objective now is to really focus on the live show and think of ideas for um, the next tours that we have coming up and just kind of keep it fresh and in the moment. But like we haven't been working on any music or anything from the road. You have been fronting Sepultura now, if I'm correct, for 26 years, dude. Is that right? 26 years? Oh my goodness. That's um, about right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over that period of time, Derek, like the band have obviously with you, they've released nine studio albums, but like for you, when you look back on those albums, is there any one of those albums? I know they're all special to you guys because they are your creation, but is there any one in particular that kind of stands out for you uh, in a sentimental way possibly or, or, or for another particular reason? Any one of the, uh, the albums over that period of time? Well, I mean, each one is very special. Um, without each one, we could be where we're at right now. I think for me, definitely the first album that I think with Sepultura against will always hold very strong to me. It was such a challenge to do that. Um, one of the most challenging recordings that I've ever done being with the band. Um, just because there were so many things going on, it was such a battle for us to really um, to keep things flowing, to keep things going, um, and also getting to know each other. And it was a really great time, you know, that, that, that fight that we had going on which is still continuing, <laughs> but in a different way, um, you know, so it was, it was really exciting time. And I think for me, that album will always be very special working in so many different studios, with different producers. Um, I mean, and, and those songs themselves, I wasn't there at the very beginning of the writing process for um, a lot of the songs, but it was still a learning experience that is unforgettable to be you know, thrown into uh, the whole Sepultura world. You know, I knew nothing about, you know, you have to remember there was really no internet at the time that I joined, so I couldn't go online and check out. It was just from fanzines and certain friends telling me, you know, what they experienced from seeing Sepultura um, or going to, or I, I just didn't realize, you know, the magnitude of the band yeah. until being in the band and that process um, was happening during against and traveling and touring and everything for the first time with them. So um, that album will always be monumental in my mind. Uh, the pandemic really fucked things up, and it, you yeah. know, an awful lot of like, there's a lot of healing that seems that still is happening within the industry. I don't, I don't think most people actually understand logistically how difficult it is to to kind of claw back, and loads of people are, are struggling in that part of the industry, but. I, I suppose my question is, from what you've seen, do you find that it's just, it's it's an, almost an unattainable thing for younger bands these days? Now, when you look at the the monumental task of how are we going to put a tour together and tour buses and the cost of everything and gas for your car or van or whatever, I mean, for younger bands, do you kind of think, Jesus Christ, I don't know how you're going to do this, you know? It's extremely difficult now, more than ever. I mean, the industry itself is, consistently trying to take as much as they can from the artists because of the whole pandemic as far as uh, clubs you know really being extremely greedy and trying to make their money back through the artists which is completely ridiculous you know as far as having absurd percentages that they're taking from your merch which doesn't make any sense to me at all being an artist where you're creating the merch you're carrying the merch, you're paying the tax on the merch, you're doing everything to make it relevant and to have it out there. And then somebody comes along and they're like, oh, I'm gonna take 30%. I'm gonna take 20% of, you know, whatever it is that you're, you're selling in our venue. And I think this is absolutely absurd and outrageous, 
you know, that they are push this on artists. And it's something where a lot of people don't realize that's where you make your money as an artist is with your merchandise. It can sometimes save a tour, you know, if, and if you're not getting that engaged, you know, the, the, the proper payment. So I think this is something that's happened a lot more where the percentages are going up, which is absolutely uh, disgusting, I think. And, and super greedy from these these promote uh, these these clubs doing this, especially in the U.S. Um, I find it's like very disrespectful for certain places where they're doing check-ins, um, where checking your bags as an artist as you're rolling into a, a venue. I mean, it's completely absurd, and it really was pissing me off here. Um, the fact that they were putting us in the level was almost treating us like criminals. The fact that we're putting on a show, creating a show that's paying everyone in the venue, I figured that we were all working together. But in the sense that, you know, these clubs are treating us like this, like we're going to do something to damage our own show is absurd. And so these things have been like popping in my mind from being on this tour that really drive me up the wall. And, and it's forced fans to do other alternatives of selling their merchandise, whether selling and pre-selling it, or doing pop-up stores for places where they're not taking so much of a percentage of your merch, or maybe just a flat fee just to rent the space out, and then you can sell your merch there a day before the show. All sorts of alternatives that artists were gonna look for just so they're not being ripped off from these clubs and venues. And I, don't, I think a lot of artists need to speak out because I, I think mo a lot of artists might be afraid to speak out from being banned or whatever from certain shows, but I think it's important if every artist spoke out about this and really talked about it and really try to find a change in this because I think it's unfair in so many ways. It's just disgusting the fact that, you know, a lot of these people in the industry are just always trying to take away from the artists when the artists already have less. You know, we're the ones that hadn't played for two years as well, too. So, you know, it's like we're coming back struggling and, and fighting and trying to, um, pay a lot of debt and things like that but we continue onward you know the music is still very strong and and the scene and we'll i think it's just important that musicians and artists fight for their rights okay just to change gears a little bit um yes. like, you know, uh, outside of uh sepultura you have the highway to health which is a a great show for um for people that don't know uh, Derek does this wonderful show with Tanya from uh, White Snake, uh, the awesome Tanya Callahan, and it's a, a great show. It's about sort of it's about well-being and and looking after yourself um, from the perspective of I guess I mean anyone can do, it, but it's from you guys who are touring all the time and right. what you eat when you're on the road to keep fit and feel healthy and and also you're looking at really clever sort of innovations, things that are just gentle and kind, I guess, to our bodies and the planet. I mean, it's definitely a plan of ours is to really get it out there and to really do as much as we can with Highway to Hell. And I think it's going really well, a lot of very positive feedback. And we're all, not only touching on plant-based food and food, but just sustainability as well. So the options of different guests that we have is expanding. Um, the idea is to really break those stereotypes that exist in that plant-based world, um, questions that people may have about sustainability that we get asked all the time on the road. So why not make a show about it, you know, putting those questions up. And this show is for people who aren't plant-based, who may have all those different questions and, and curious about maybe having a day with no meat or maybe two days in the week. You know, it's really not a show that's 100% for vegans, um, and and so we wanted to really take a a lighter approach, you know, a fun approach, um, but also have a variety of different guests. I mean, it's it's a great show, and I urge everybody to check it out. You can find it on YouTube. Yeah. Just, just uh, type in "Highway to Health," which is uh, yeah, and you will find a selection of videos there that you can you can look through. Absolutely. And so, yes, we are officially on the countdown to Bloodstock. Um, here's your opportunity to address the bloodstock community, and if you want to, <laughs> if you want to give a message to them, and you know, if you want to address the bloodstock community with a, a message from you, from Sepultura to them, I will give you the floor right now. No, absolutely, we're so excited to be coming to Bloodstock again. We look forward to seeing everyone in the goddamn pit. Uh, we really look forward to coming and playing 
you know, a variety of Sepultura songs. Um, we're all in great health at this moment. This is something that's very vital and that we've had a lot of problems with in the past is broken bones and things like that. But it's a great feeling to be together and we want to share this momentum that we're having with you guys and we look forward to playing Bloodstock and seeing you all there. I am the one.